podcast lecture, I want to talk about the moral and ethical system of Immanuel Kant, outlined in his book, The Fundamentals of the Metaphysic of Morals, published in 1785, but really continued throughout all his works in the latter part of the 18th century. The headline is that Kant teaches that all of us have within us an innate sense of right and wrong. He calls it the moral law within, and we're always aware of this law at all times, regardless of circumstances. Any person may do an immoral act of some sort, such as telling a lie, and they might well get away with it, and they might calculate they're bound to get away with it. But even in those circumstances, Kant says they will know they have done the wrong thing. Immediately, there's a very important practical point here for journalists. No philosopher, certainly not Kant, would think that any of us as journalists or just as ordinary people could ever say they knew the truth about any matter. But Kant is asserting we always know when we're being honest or not. So as we're going about doing our job of reporting, what we have to bear in mind, if we're working in line with Kantian ethics anyway, is whether we think we are telling the truth, whether we think we are being honest. We will be absolutely certain as to whether we think we're being honest or whether we're being dishonest, regardless of whether we know the truth or not. Now, in some ways, in practical terms, this should be a great weight off our shoulders because we now do not need to know the sort of transcendent truth about any matter. We can be absolutely certain about whether our view of it is honest, meaning to say it's the most scrupulous attempt that we've made to describe it accurately and fairly. So whatever else we might say about the Kantian system, and it can be criticised on all sorts of levels, just in my subjective experience, I can't get away from Kant, I can't explain away Kant's proposition that I personally, and all other people, he would assert, have this intuition about honesty and dishonesty. He, Kant, and everybody he knows, but he's asserting that this is a universal fact of human existence, that all people, all humans who are humans, have this built-in subjective moral law. They intuitively know the difference between right and wrong, between good acts and bad acts, and that such an awakening of, uh, of moral awareness happens quite young in the development of the person, almost from the time they can uh, talk. Now there's an immediate objection to Kant on empiricist and anthropological grounds anthropology being the comparative study of the belief systems and customs of uh, different societies, different civilizations. It might be that in our civilization, for example, uh, cannibalism is taboo. It's a bad thing. and We would have a moral intuition that we shouldn't do it, even if we were starving to death. This is a, a discussion that came up in connection with reading Jonathan Swift's satire a modest proposal. Yet there might be either an actual or possible other civilization where cannibalism was um, either morally neutral or perhaps even a good thing, a mark of respect. Um, according to Fraser in his book The Golden Bough, there are types of Buddhist sects um, who believe that eating the flesh of the recently departed is a good thing to do, a mark of respect. But I don't think that that really gets to it, because Kant would say, well, even if you transposed these values, if you had a, a, situ a society where cannibalism was bad, um, and if, if suddenly um, all their values of that society changed, and the taboos changed, and cannibalism was good, then people would, have, would still have a moral sense that uh, now, by refusing to eat human flesh, then they were being bad. So he thinks that the intuition is there all the time, regardless of the passing circumstances or the taboos of the, of the society. Now this is taken on board into our legal system, so there's a presumption 
that even quite young children do have a at least a developing sense, a developing innate sense of what is right and what is wrong. So it's not possible to plead innocent uh, in a British court to the crime of murder on the grounds that you didn't know it was morally wrong. There might be people like that, but we would have to define them as, um, in, a, in modern terms, uh, psychopaths. The sense of right and wrong for Kant is very close to the core of what it means to be human. For Aristotle, man is the political animal, but for Kant, man is the moral animal. This is what sets us part, apart from uh, other creatures, is we have uh, this innate sense, this intuition of what is morally right and what is morally wrong. Given this subjective, intuitive basis of morality, how then does Kant say we should live our lives? Uh, what rules, laws, principles should we adopt in order uh, to live the good life, to be good people, to pursue justice? The answer to this comes in the juxtaposition of what Kant calls the categorical imperative as opposed to the hypothetical imperative of moral behaviour. A hypothetical imperative is a command where there's a moral type instruction but the instruction is only temporary and it's only to achieve specific ends. So for example, if you want to pass your journalism exam, tell the truth in your news reports. If you want to avoid failing on the fatal error system we have in news reporting, never lie. If you wish to pass your exams, work hard. Now there's an implication in the hypothetical imperative that once you've passed your exam, there's no need to work hard anymore. The categorical imperative would just say work hard. So the categorical imperative is a moral type command which always applies to all people at all times in all circumstances with no exceptions whatsoever. And for Kant, the test of whether a person is a moral person is only about whether they obey categorical imperatives which they set for themselves or which are set by society with their consent. Only when you obey the categorical imperative of the type never lie are you moral. Um, if you don't want to go to jail, then don't lie is not at all moral. It is immoral because it is a hypothetical um, imperative and not a categorical imperative. Now this is a, a very tough uh, moral regime, a very harsh moral regime, uh, particularly as it has its origins in the noumenal unknowable world and our intuition of how things ought to be uh, in that world. Of course it's highly compatible with religion, that these uh, hypoth sorry, these categorical imperatives, "Thou shalt not kill," um, have gone, uh, have come from God, and want they must always be obeyed with no exceptions. Of course, in Christianity, they have the concept of the just war, but essentially, there are the uh, Ten Commandments. They are all categorical imperatives, and if you break any of them, you might find it convenient and pleasing to do so. But Kant's contention is you will know when you've broken them, you will know when you've broken this moral